Now a deep dive into the current political climate through the eyes of a former vice president. After Republicans historically underperformed this midterm election and Trump-backed election deniers were widely rebuked by voters, Mike Pence sat down with David Muir to recount the events of January 6th from his perspective. Today, the former vice president took some time to chat with me about a wide array of issues, including his process in deciding whether he will run for president, what his thoughts are about other potential Republican candidates, and what he took out of Republicans' surprisingly good showing here in New York. My first question, uh, why the book now? Well, Sandra, it's good to be with you. And uh, for me to have had the opportunity, and so help me God, to write uh, my story was a great privilege. And uh, I sat down after we left the White House uh, and we started the process of writing not just the story of the White House years, but really of growing up in a small town in Indiana, the grandson of an Irish immigrant, the son of a combat veteran in the Korean War, and a first generation Irish American, meeting the girl of my dreams, and the two of us being able to live that dream with our kids, to serve in Congress, to serve as governor of Indiana, and then ultimately as vice president of the United States during uh, four extraordinary years uh, of accomplishment uh, for this country. And obviously, it didn't end well, and I write candidly about that, and so help me God. But uh, I hope when people take a look at our book, uh, uh, they'll have a sense better of who we are, how our faith and our family has been central to all of our service uh, and our calling, and and I, and I hope they uh, I, I hope they find encouragement as an American uh, that, uh, that 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 there is a pathway forward here to get back uh, to having government as good as our people, and uh, we may well be a part of that, and we'll be making those decisions in the months ahead. Well, it leads me to my next question. That sounded like a presidential resume. Are you <laughs> running for president? You know, I'm proud, Sandra, I'll keep you posted on that. I, I, I will tell you, I'm always humbled to be asked uh, as I've traveled around the country the last two years. I've been, I've been very moved at how many Americans have come up to express appreciation for the record of the Trump-Pence administration, a record that revived our economy, rebuilt our military, secured our border, achieved energy independence, uh, record unemployment and conservatives on our courts at every level. But I've also heard encouragement from people that that long for leadership that will unite us around timeless American ideals and the civility that, frankly, Americans practice with one another every day. Uh, you know, this is a this is a great country filled with good people. The American people actually get along pretty well on most days once you get a little bit outside of politics. and. Uh, uh, we'll reflect on that encouragement. We'll give prayerful consideration over the holidays, and uh, we'll make a decision sometime early next year about about what role we might play. And I know you said uh, the we, I'm assuming, with your family. Um, and since you're not going to answer my question directly, I'm going to ask you another way. Are there any family members up to this point that have expressed reservations about your running for office, for president? You know, it's, you know, it's one of the great things um, that Karen and I are blessed with is uh, three kids. Uh, they're all married. We have one perfect granddaughter. and. Um, uh, ever since they were little and that first successful run for Congress, Sandra, I can tell you, um, our kids are our closest advisors. You know, even in those difficult days, the waning hours uh, of that tragic day in January, it was to our family that we that we turned when I was writing that statement that I that I read on the floor of the Congress. My my kids know my heart better than anybody except their mother, and so we'll we'll talk to them and. Uh, the great part about our kids, whatever decision Karen and I make, I know, I know our kids uh, will be 100 percent behind it. And are there factors that you are looking at that will have you leaning one way or the other? Well, Sandra, I, for me, you know, someone said to me some time ago, and this is in the book, So Help Me God, is there two kinds of people in politics, people that are driven and people that are called. And if you read the book, you'll see I've been both uh, early in my political career. I let my ambition get the best of me. I ran campaigns I wasn't proud of. But by the time we were eventually elected to Congress, we, we were trying to respond to a calling, a call to serve our country, as uh, my dad did in uniform, as my son does today in the United States Marine Corps. And so for us, it's simply going to be trying to discern 
with prayerful consideration, listening to friends, listening to the American people as we travel about what our calling is, and we'll go where we're called. And let me be clear, we, we won't let anybody else make that decision for us. Uh, uh, we'll go where we believe we're called to serve and we'll let the American people decide. Now, we are expecting a big announcement tonight from former President Trump. He is expected to announce that he will run for office for a third time. What would you like to hear from him? Or I should ask, what do you expect to hear from him tonight? And also, what should voters be listening for if they have to make the decision about whether or not they want to elect him again? Well, let me say, I don't know what uh, President Trump will announce tonight. I'm pretty sure he's not announcing my book. <laughs> um, but come on, Sandra, it's a free country. Uh, the president can uh, express his intentions in any manner. Uh, and, uh, uh, and as I've said, I, I don't think anybody other than Donald Trump could have defeated Hillary Clinton in 2016. But, but I think in the days ahead, we'll have better choices. Uh, I think we'll have candidates better fitted to the times that that want to see our country go back uh, to the strength and prosperity that we enjoyed under the Trump Pence administration. But as I said, uh, that also want to see our country uh, and our government in particular begin to reflect uh, the kind of a decency and civility uh, that Americans live by every day. Do you feel at this point that uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantos uh, Santos may be one of those candidates? He's doing quite well in the polls among Republicans. Well, that'll be up to uh, Governor DeSantis to make that decision. The, the, the great part about being a Republican these days is that we've got a very deep bench of men and women who have extraordinary accomplishments in public life. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm very confident, as I said, that and when the time comes for us to choose our standard bearer for 2024, Republican primary voters will choose well. I think we'll have better choices uh, uh, than uh, my old running mate. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it's so important that we get this country back on track, that we advance policies that will create prosperity, that we secure our borders, support our military in an increasingly dangerous world. Uh, and I look forward to being a part of that debate in some way, shape, manner, or form. In this past midterm elections, Republicans did quite well here in New York in this deeply blue state, a really tight governor's race, even though Mr. Zeldin ultimately lost. But Republicans gained four seats on Long, congressional seats on Long Island, a really important congressional seat in the Hudson Valley. Why do you think uh, voters in this deeply blue state were listening to those candidates this time around? Well, I think Lee Zeldin ran a brilliant campaign and a courageous campaign. Uh, out of his deep love for New York. And, uh, and while he came up short, uh, I don't think there's any question that his campaign and the quality of those candidates in those four congressional districts uh, carried the day. And uh, voters in New York might take some pride, as I've told Lee Zeldin myself, that uh, his candidacy, their success, may well be the margin of the Republican majority. <laughs> in the United States House of Representatives. And that's an enormous contribution to the life of the nation. When Nancy Pelosi passes that gavel to Kevin McCarthy as the new Speaker of the House, we're going to start our way back uh, to the policies uh, that we advanced in the Trump-Pence administration back when we had Republican majorities in the House and in the Senate. Uh, and I give Lee Zeldin, I give the people of New York and, and those four new members of Congress great, great credit. They might just be the majority makers and deserve every bit of credit for it. So there are some lessons for the, the larger party to learn from what happened here in New York, you believe? I believe there's always lessons to be learned uh, in elections. And uh, look, elections are about the future. And I think when you look at those midterm elections, uh, while we won the House majority, it was unfortunately disappointing statewide here in New York and, and frankly in many states around the country. And uh, but the common denominator I see, Sandra, is that that candidates that focused on the future did quite well. The candidates who uh, focused on the past or relitigating the past did less well. And so I think one of the enduring lessons of this midterm is the American people uh, voted in a way that showed that they want to get behind men and women that are focused on the challenges today, not relitigating elections past. And they're focused on a vision for the future that'll really restore America to the prosperity and strength that we enjoyed under the Trump-Pence administration. 
Vice President Pence, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. I suspect this will not be the last conversation we have with you. Thank you, Sandra. Good to be with you.